and how they can wreak havoc in the ecosystem. It definitely comes up in our discussions. And in Texas, the Mozambique tilapia is a, is allowed as a as a to you can, you are allowed to own Mozambique tilapia. You can sell them unless you have a special permit. Other species of tilapia are not allowed. But the 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 cold weather that usually gets a lot of areas will keep tilapia in control. In Florida, they have a big tilapia problem because the temperatures there don't routinely get cold enough to kill tilapia. Here in Texas. You know, almost almost all of Texas gets enough cold weather to kill off a native tilapia. I mean, a tilapia that has escaped into the wild environment. There are power plants that have water, warm water, in certain areas because of the power plant, and the tilapia can set up shop there, and they can winter over in those areas, and they can become an invasive, you know, a, a persistent invasive species. So it is is definitely something we we have to keep in mind. Um, further north, you don't have to worry about it as much, but down south, there, there are definitely some issues with if you have tilapia escaping into the wild, they will, you know, they, they will create a pest problem. Uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Are you familiar with morning star fishermen in Day City? Yeah, the question is, am I familiar with morning star fishermen? And I am, yes. Uh, they do training as well in aquaponics. Um, they're also doing a lot of work in, in third world countries to help people to feed themselves, to create systems where they can grow all of the food that they need, and they, they do great work. So if you go to morningstar.org, I think, morningstarfisherman.org, they're, they're a great, or, great operation, and you can actually, I think they're in Dade City. Dade City, Florida? Okay, sorry, thank you. I went there. Oh, you went there? Oh, great. Was it good? How long is their training? They have training. Okay, so they offer a wide range of training that you can get there in Florida. And it's a great facility. And it's large, and they have a number of different systems that they're working with. You aren't going to No. Okay, she says it, it was a great training. She, you went there for how long? How long did you go? I went for two weeks. You went for two weeks. Great. Okay. How much did they charge for that? You know? It was a little pricey. It was a little pricey. If you pricey. make a donation, then it's not quite as expensive. If you make a donation, it's not quite as expensive. I'm not quite following that. <laughs> I, I do, I mean, I, I really believe in supporting the people who are training people in this technology. I think it's important that we get it out there. If we're serious about, about saving our oceans, which are the lungs of the planet, if we're serious about that, then we should be willing to pay for the education that we need to be able to do that. Go ahead, sir. What's the harvest cycle for uh, catfish? You said it's six months for tilapia. Yeah, cat, what is the harvest cycle for a catfish? I believe it's closer to a year. They're, they're a slower growing species. And it depends on how big of a catfish you want. Generally speaking, when you raise a fish, they'll grow quickly up to a certain point, and then after that, the, the feed conversion ratio, they call it, tapers off. And so it becomes commercially less productive to keep putting in more and more feed for a less and less return on the dollar. But if you want a larger fillet, that's what you do. And if your feed is coming from something which is sustainable and cheap and you know garbage based basically, then it really doesn't cost you as much to, to raise a larger fish. Sure. Can trout be done this man? Can you raise trout trout in an aquaponic system? Um, I am not I'm not aware of anyone raising trout in an aquaponic system. I'm, there are people raising bass, which is a, a, a freshwater species which is more sensitive to water quality issues. So I believe you probably could raise a trout in an aquaponic system, but I haven't seen it done, and it probably requires a greater amount of water to put each, you know, the, the stocking per gallon is going to be far lower compared to other species. And so you would need to spend a lot of money for your tanks to put the fish in and so it would become uneconomic at a certain point. So it, it may or may not make sense to do that. It depends on the local value of a trout. If you have a restaurant that wants to buy trout from you, it might make perfect sense to raise trout. You in the back. I think I raised a question. Is there a distinction between aquaponics and aquaculture raising fish? Because my, my sister is up in Maine, and they have these salmon commercial properties that are indigenous. Right, yes, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the question is, uh, 
what's the basic difference between aquaculture and aquaponics? That fair enough interpretation of question. Okay. Aquaculture right now is where we're getting almost half of our fish that we bought. And aquaculture is an extremely dirty industry. It is creating pollution problems wherever it's practiced because they most fish that they're raising for us to eat, they are releasing the waste from these fish into the environment rather than cleaning it up before they do so. In the, the salmon farms that are in the northwestern United States and in the northeast, they put them in estuaries where they have large amounts of water flowing through because the salmon requires a great deal of clean water in order to survive. They put them in these, these net pens and they pack them in and then they give them antibiotics and other drugs to make them actually stay alive in these conditions because the, the trout and salmon and things of fish life of this nature, they did not evolve in this confined type of highly dense confined areas. They, they live in the wild and they're used to having a lot of fresh water. So in order to get these fish to actually survive in a, in a concentrated feedlot operation, you have to give them a lot of antibiotics and hormones and things like that. And the fish are getting off waste all the time because you're feeding them. And that waste goes right into the environment and they say that the average trout or salmon farm gives off as much waste as uh, a town of 65,000 people. And it's just going straight into the environment. It's not being treated at all. It's causing a huge number of, it, of issues. And aquaculture, aquaculture, not aquaponics, aquaculture is a very dirty industry. And the more you know about it, the, the, the more disgusted you get with, with the way that we're currently feeding a lot of people here on the planet. Sir, go ahead. Are the Canadians doing a better job than us as far as aquaculture? Okay, um, as far as the, I know, the answer is no. The United States actually has uh, the best regulated fisheries as far as I'm aware. From You can read, uh, there's a couple of books out there. One's called End of the Line. The other one's called uh, Bottom Feeder. I recommend those two books. Uh, they go over the whole fishery depletion issues and how we're managing our fisheries. And unfortunately, the Canadians, as, as progressive as they are in some regards, are, are behind us as far as managing the fisheries properly. They are, uh, the, and the salmon farming is is is, uh, is dirty because they're allowing the cost to be transferred. And, and unfortunately, so far, they are not regulating them to the degree that they need to be. As soon as they do, they'll pretty much have to go out of business because they won't be able to really stay in business dumping that much waste into the environment. If they had to clean up their waste, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have a saleable product. It would be too expensive. So go ahead. Question number two. Yeah, the growth curve on the tilapia definitely tails off. Uh, the feed conversion ratio, they usually raise them up to about a pound and a half because after that the, the feed conversion ratio increases. But with tilapia you can put in about 1.5 pounds of food to get a pound of tilapia out. So it's, it's on, on that level and that's, that's very efficient for, for most animals. And that's, that's because a tilapia is mostly water. Um, so tilapia, she, the question is, how is tilapia regulated? You said, where, how do you purchase it from the system? Right, how do you purchase tilapia to run your systems? You, you can purchase tilapia from, from registered tilapia breeders. They will sell you a Mozambique tilapia. And I have a, a, a dealer that I work with who raises some beautiful Mozambique tilapia. He's up in DeSoto, Texas, just, just south of Dallas. And he raises those fish from, from some very select breeds that were raised for their uh, meat production. And so you can obtain them, you need to buy them from uh, specific dealers who will sell you the fry and you can own them legally as long as